hello and welcome to my channel today we are opening this mini verse make it mini food and this is series two uh, with the pizza on the outside so we're going to see what's in here and make that in 1 to 12 uh, so let me open up this little ball here And uh, the tear strip is never working for me. Um, looks so real. Oh, that is both something I would like to have. But let's open it and see what we really got. Ugh. Okay, and we're just opening, opening it like that. Ugh. Come on. Nope. There we go. Let's open it and see. That was really tight. So we have a little ball for it. And this really smells like resin. Oh, and if you don't know what these are, then please uh, be advised that there is resin in these. Um, so if you are a parent and your kids want one of these, then uh, if you get them for them, please be advised that it is not healthy and it's actually toxic. So if they are going to play with this, please um, help them out. So we can keep everyone safe. Here we have the collector's guide. There is a lot of really cool things here. I would like some of the cakes. Um, I don't have any of these because I didn't open any of these yet. So I think we won't get a double this time because we didn't open this kind yet. Anyway, we got the little table here. Um, and save these because I have some ideas for them uh, in a later vi video we have the little doily let's take this one first so in this bag we have the little tweezers oh we are getting a cake spoon or knife cake knife I think and the top for the lid here there we go there we go, so it's kind of a uh, thing you can put over your done work. The little tweezers and this little cute cake spatula. Oh, it's a knife on one side. Um, let's take the next one. Have a sunny day. Happy Sun Farms. Let's just open it. Oh, a cake stand. That's a neat little cake stand with a uh, top around this one. Some cake decorations. I think I know which one this is going to be. I like these icings here. Um, I think the small one would work on 1 to 12 cakes. So you could make a mold of this one and then use that for cakes in 1 to 12. I might have to do that. Here we got the resin Ooh. and a little nozzle for the resin and a warning let's see if I can unwrap this one there we go and warning to not eat it uh, that would be dangerous as it is toxic this one you get ah yes the little uh, decoration or topper for the cake that's actually pretty cute. And then I think this last one is the cake. Yes. The cake. I really like the boxes and stuff they are coming in here. This feels like a uh, rubber or something. It's very rubbery. I don't think I can show you, but it is rubbery. And it is... Uh, gabbing right there. Anyway, uh, let me clean up and then we can put it together. 
So now it is time to do the project. So I am placing a few of these things to the side and I am starting with the cake itself. So let's get the cake out of this holder here. Um, I could make it just like it is on the little piece of paper for guidance. Um, but I was thinking of doing something a little different. So I'm going to take my cutting board and I'm gonna um, kind of cut a slice out of the cake with my very sharp exacto knife. And it's right about here that I figure out that this cake is hollow on the inside. So my brain is going really, really fast on what to do next and how I'm going to save this so that it looks right. Um, but I did cut the cake, so now I will have to go through with it and just get it cut all open. Um, so you will be able to see here how it is made of hollow pieces. And it took a little effort to get this little piece of cake out um, from the bottom part here. Uh, so I've just took my time and cut it free. Here you can see how it is made. It is kind of uh, two shells that is put together. And I'm trying to figure out what to do. And I think if I'm putting it a little crooked here like this, then it will look good and you won't be able to notice the holes in the cake that the middle part is missing so i am deciding to glue it together i am using a tacky glue to glue this piece in place and uh, later it did fall out of the cake so i am going in there later with a tiny bit of super glue instead because this tacky glue won't keep it in place anyway so just uh, find the glue that you think will work in there but the tacky glue is not working at all and i'm just going to clean off a tiny bit of the rest glue here uh, not knowing that this would not work at all uh, i'm not showing that i'm using the super glue later because now i told you um, i'm also using the tacky glue to glue on the little cake spatula but it's again not working so i had to reattach that again with a tiny drop of super glue don't put too much super glue on there because it can um, give the plastic so uh, kind of a white uh, shine to it a haze or something like that but i will re-glue this all together again with super glue off camera um, a little later so this is kind of a frozen moment that I'm making here and I actually think it turned out pretty neat. Now my cake base is ready and I am ready to go and decorate. So I am uh, taking this little uh, bottle of resin and uncapping it. Um, yeah, just unscrew it and peel off the little metal plate here and yes, this was way easier to open than the series uh, one of the diner. Then I open up the whipped cream because I have to cut it in so that it fits around uh, the cake here. Uh, so I was just looking really good here and seeing I think it is almost two pieces of the whipped cream here for the big ring so I'm just going to cut that here on my mat off the camera and just making a measure again and cutting it just taking my time and going really slow with this actually I think it was one and a half piece of white cream measuring and it fits perfect around the cake what I did not show you here was that before I used the white cream here i actually made a mold both of the big ring and the smaller ring with some mold putty now it is time for the resin and i had a few problems to get this started if you have problems like this you can put it in the little bottle into some hot water making sure that there is not coming water into the resin because the two parts resin and water is not gonna mix well 
And now I'm just going all the way around the top here of the cake, making some drippy drops here and there on the sides. And just again taking my time with this. Let's speed that part up a bit because it actually took way longer than I wanted it to. But I wanted it to look right. So I'm using my tool to kind of create the dips or uh, drips over the sides here. And then I am going in and placing the little ring of the wipe cream on top of the glazing that we just placed there. So the resin, the glazing will kind of work as a really strong glue and keep everything together. Don't forget the little part here on the cake that we actually raised up a tiny bit. So I am again using my tool to kind of scoop the uh, resin around and place it like I want to, making some small drips down, down the side so it really looks like somebody is taking off this piece of cake. And then I place a little piece of um, white cream where it needs to go and make sure that you turn it the right way around so it looks cohesive with the rest of the white cream. Now it is time for the UV light and I am using my small little fancy light here for that and I'm giving it around for eight minutes just to make sure that it is totally hardened. And then I hit the record button on the video camera on the wrong time. So I did not get the recording of how I made the top of the cake, but I did that exact same way as I did the round uh, around uh, the first layer. So I placed a lot of resin on the top, scooped it around and over the side and placed the wipe cream. And I made sure to place the decoration on the top as well so that it all is sitting in the resin and it is kind of stuck on there. And here you can actually see that I am gluing this uh, cake sp uh, spatula here back in place. Um, and now it is just time for me to put that on top of the little cake stand. And that is all for this little um, creation of the cake here. I'm really sorry that I lost that footage. The content in the miniverse are uh, blind back balls, blind balls, are uh, iron 1 to 6. So for 1 to 12 scale, I had to make a cake stand in 1 to 12. I created that in Fusion 360 and printed it on my resin printer. You will find the link for this one in the info box below. I did clean the support pieces of the little cake stand and now I am going to give it a thin layer of a, a UV resin. I'm actually using a um, UV gel for nail arts. This is a top coat. Uh, it is a soak off top coat, but that really doesn't matter. The point is that this top coat is drying with no residues uh, so that it is all uh, non-sticky when it is all dry. That's the important part if you use a uh, nail art resin for um, kind of a glaze layer on thing you make. Uh, if you use a normal glaze on a resin piece, uh, it will get a little more hazy than if you use resin on it. So I'm just using this nail art gel all over this little uh, cake stand. Then I placed it under my UV lamp for uh, a good 10 minutes to make sure everything was hardened and that it was uh, non-sticky at all. Now it is time to work on the cake and for that I made this cake color. I took a little yellow, a little uh, caramel and mixed that together with a lot of white clay and I got this yellowish brownish color clay that is perfect for the cake. And now I am shape shaping and uh, rounding the first layer of the cake. Um, and I'm going to use this extra glass plate because I want it to be big enough for my cake stand. So I'm measuring all the time. And I want it to be round enough to look like a cake. When I am happy with the size and the shape of the cake, I am going to cut it into the height that I want for my cake. 
uh, and this will um, give it a little flat uh, spot here on the side so I'm just going to uh, try to fix that a tiny bit it's still a little wonky but I'm working on it when I am happy with the first piece of the cake the big one uh, I'm just going to leave that off to the side and work on the smaller part of the cake. I'm making the smaller part so that it fits on the inside of the whipped cream from uh, the top layer of the other cake. So it is still a tiny bit smaller than the other cake. Um, so yes, I made uh, the whipped cream uh, mold here. I made that from uh, silicone, but you can use amazing mold putty or whatever kind of mold putty you have. Um, just I made a mold of the whipped cream before I used it on the other cake. And now I'm just shaping this top layer and making sure it has the shape and the height that I want it to. So I'm just yeah, working on it until I'm happy and then cutting it off so that it is around the same height as the bottom uh, cake has and again, this makes the cakes a tiny bit wonky, so you just have to work a tiny bit with it until it has the rounded shape you like again. I placed the two parts of cake together. Um, as this is unbaked clay, you can do that and it should be sticking together. If you are not sure that it will stick good enough, you can use some bacon bond or some female liquid. Uh, in between the two layers of the cakes. Now I'm using a piece of tin foil rolled together into a little ball to give my cake some texture uh, so that it looks more like a texture and I'm also using a toothbrush so that I get the right texture on my cake. I took my time with texturing the cake so I was happy with the result. Now I'm using my soft pastel colors to give it a little more uh, color, to give it a little more realism. Uh, and I'm first using this light brown um, that I'm kind of scraping into dust. This way it's easier. Uh, you might also find it easier to use your finger. I actually went over to my finger here. It's a little faster, but careful, you can get way too much on there when you're doing it with the finger. When I was happy with the light brown color, I went into this darker reddish brown color. And again, I'm using my pencil, my brush, paintbrush this time, because um, I'm making sure that I'm not getting way too much of this darker brown on there. I just wanted to have this like a uh, nice golden brown look. When I'm happy with the look of this uh, darker brown, I am going in with this more reddish brown and I'm doing that with my fingers and mostly on the edges of the cake. And I'm also going to take a tiny tiny bit of this really really dark brown I have so that it looks like it had been kind of burned a tiny bit here and there. Don't do too much of that one. So now I am going to cut a slice of this cake, just like with uh, the uh, one from the Miniverse. I am just cutting a nice triangular shape out of my cake here. Carefully removing it and then I am taking a needle tool and I am scratching the inside surface here of the cake to look like real uh, bread texture and I'm doing the same on both sides of the little cake piece here. I speeded that up because that takes quite some time to do. Um, so take your time with this and just um, kind of enjoy the process of doing it and before you know of it you are done with it and it will look great.
For the back side of the cake, I am placing the little cake piece here on a little mold with some texture in there uh, so that I don't ruin all the textures that I made on the other side. But after doing this side, I had to repair the other side a tiny bit before I could continue. For some reason, I didn't record uh, that I put the little piece of cake into the bigger cake so that it is sitting just like on the one we did from the miniverse. Here I am using some opaque white clay that I rolled it into a snake and I'm placing it into the small uh, mold of the wipe cream here and I'm just squeezing it in there and then I'm going to cut off the excess clay later. When you have taken all the risk clays off here, then it's a very good idea to leave it for 5-10 minutes to kind of harden or set a little before you're carefully trying to uh, scoop it out of the mold. I'm kind of releasing the edges here first uh, all the way around and then I'm using my needle tool here to kind of lift it out of the mold so that I don't ruin anything that I made here. So this is for the top layer of my cake. So I am going in here and cutting out, I think, two of these small pieces here of the wipe cream. And then I'm kind of shaping the circle again. I'm not uh, trying to connect the part here at all because um, we're going to cut it off in the end uh, for the little piece of the cake that is poking up. But I'm trying to make it look like it fits together in this one circle of whipped cream. Then I made yet another ring just uh, like the other one. Uh, this time I didn't cut out the two pieces uh, for uh, making the ring smaller and I decided to cut one more piece of the white cream out here for the ring to have the size that I want to for the top layer. The big ring here is actually a tiny bit too small so it had been better if I had used the bigger ring in the mold and made that and then cut out a tiny piece or two but I'm going to leave it as is. Now for this little uh, cake topper I have this straw thingy uh, and I'm just placing, um, placing the straw thingy into a little hole that I poked in the top of my cake uh, making sure that the hole is big enough. I do decide to cut off these uh, straws into a uh, length that I liked, uh, maybe even too long for this little cake, but um, I'm cutting them into size so they have the same size and I'm actually using this size. I think it's around one and a half centimeter long. And then I'm just poking it into the cake right away and leaving them there while baking the cake. Now for the cake knife, I am using my own to kind of measure how big it should be in 1 to 12. So I measure that with my normal measuring uh, ruler for the real deal and then I have this 1 to 12 ruler for miniature in 1 to 12 so I can measure exactly uh, the length and the width and stuff like that of this um, cake knife or spatula or what you call those.
to get the little angle on the handle here, I am using a ice sickle stick, pop cycle, pops, pop cycle stick, one of these wooden sticks you use for ice creams, and I wrap that with um, a tin foil, and I'm placing that under the handle here so that it get the right bend for the little handle. Um, and then I am using my tool to make these kind of uh, sharp edges on each side of the little cake knife. I am using this True Mattel uh, silver paint here. This is kind of a rough and buff and rough, rough and buff. Rub and buff. It's a rub and buff. Um, but you can use any kind of silver paint that you have. I'm just painting the little uh, cake knife here in the silvery color so that it looks nice when we're all done. After painting the little cake knife, remember the edges also, I am going to glue that until my little cake here and I'm using a tiny tiny bit of super glue, it's just a tiny dot and placing the little cake knife right there underneath the cake. Now it is time for the whipped cream and I am cutting one of these pieces or dollops off here. Um, making sure I'm cutting where it's not connected and I am trying to see if it fits on there and it does so that's perfect and I am very careful not to um, break the small straws that I have placed there for the little sign on top of it and now I am going to paint the little straws here so first I am painting them all white uh, just placing them here in my tweezers so that I don't have to touch the paint. Just painting both of them white. And then I'm going to leave it to dry. While the paint is drying, I am going to take the big ring here and cut off a doily of the uh, white cream so that it fits into or onto the cake. And for this piece, I cut one and a half of these small um, doilies of the whipped cream off. And now you can see it is kind of too small to go over here. Uh, so I should have made this ring a tiny bit longer. But now I am working with what I got here and just uh, going with it. But if you do this one, uh, you should use one whole ring for the bottom part here maybe and then just one or one and a half doily for the top piece um, but you will have to figure out what fits to your cake but mine is a bit too short I'm going to use my dessert topping master the strawberry sauce for decorating the cake you could uh, mix some uh, Fimo liquid with some red um, colored soft pastel or some red clay and then use that for the uh, topping of the cake but I decided to go with this because this is quite easy to use So I went around the top edge of the bottom layer on the cake and now I'm just making some drips all the way around my cake. Be careful that you're not going to smear this out. I did drop mine on the table but I corrected it really quick again. And yes, the handle of the knife didn't have the strength for me to hold the uh, total cake just in that knife so it broke. Um, and I will glue that on later with some super glue and it's working perfect. So no biggie. When you're ready with your layer, then you can place your little wipe cream on top of this layer and just leave that to dry for 20 minutes to half an hour and then everything is stuck together. If you do this with some female liquid, then you will have to 
place it back into the oven for a few minutes before you can continue with the next layer. And I am very impatient, so I started right away on the top layer. That is kind of uh, stupid. You should wait until the first layer of this is all dry, because that makes it easier for you to grab the cake. So I started on this little top piece here. I thought I could just make that one and then let it rest. Um, so I did that. And again, I'm placing the little top piece here of whipped cream just like that so that it is sitting into the dessert topping master and that will harden in place and will not fall off. So now it is time for gluing on the little handle piece. So I'm just taking a tiny, 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 tiny drop of my uh, super glue and then gluing this little handle piece back in place. And you really can't see that I did that in the done result. So that's pretty good. I mixed a tiny bit of red uh, colored paint into my white colored paint to make this kind of light pink color and now I am uh, painting kind of a swirl all the way around these white sticks here so that they look a tiny bit like the one on the real deal and I'm doing this on both of these. When the paint is dry, I am going to use a tiny bit of tacky glue into the two small holes for the sticks. And then I am just going to place the end of the stick without paint into the little hole and make sure that they harden in there or dry in there. The original uh, cake has some small stars on top of these sticks here. I don't have stars that is that small. So I found some nice uh, pearly beads that has the uh, size for this little stick to go into. So I just took a tiny, tiny bit of my super glue and glued uh, a bead to each of these pieces of um, sticks or straws or what that is. Then it is time for the top to get the dessert topping master over there, the cream or the icing on the cake. And I'm just uh, putting that really in a nice thick layer all around the top here of the cake. And again, I'm making sure that it is kind of dripping over the side. So it looks just like the original. This strawberry sauce is hardening a little more red than the original cake, but I kind of like this little more colorish pop there is on the cake. When I'm ready with the uh, dessert topping master on the top of the cake, then I am going to place the little ring of um, whipped cream here. And then I'm just gonna let that all dry up and harden. Now we only need to get the little banner here done. So I am taking a piece of a sewing thread and I'm super gluing that just right underneath the two small beads here and making sure that it is sitting nice and uh, tight. And when that has all dried, I am cutting off the excess of the thread. I have this tiny piece of purple paper here that I cut into a thin, thin strip. And now I'm cutting out kind of a V shape at the bottom piece here and then cutting it out. Maybe this one is a little too long, but I cut them a little shorter so that they look like uh, small flags. Then when I have three of these small flags, I am using a tiny bit of my taggy glue to glue on these paper flags on the little string 
between the two pieces of straw. So I'm just doing that really carefully. And the last little flag is in place. So now all I need to do is cut off these strings here at the side. And then my little cake is all done. So here is the little cake all done and ready for serving on the little um, cake stand that we made. Um, and here is the big one compared to the little one we made in 1 to 12. This was a lot of fun. So thank you for watching and happy crafting. subscribe like and ring the bell button